propylene gas pack sitting here. And uh, it is not heating. So let's see if we can figure out why. And, uh, oh, three straight days of rain. Yesterday we got killed when the office opened with call after call after call of ice on my unit. Noises, ice breaking. We had that odd combination you get when it rains, the temperature is about 33, 34 degrees, the wind chill was a little bit, and you get these heat pumps and they're pulling that cold air through that condenser coil in heat mode and then that wind chill around the top of that unit around the inside of the shrouds those were mainly all the units that had the shroud in it the train units basically that we install and then the ice would freeze around the inside of that shroud defrost cycle is not going to thaw that out none of the coils were frozen it was just ice around the inside of the units and then the fan blades were hitting it and chopping it off probably had about nine of those calls yesterday morning come in as soon as we opened up. Uh, this one just ain't heating. <laughs> so, let's check a few things. He said it wasn't blowing air inside. We've got a steady flash right there. Or steady solid on. I can't remember on these units what that meant. What does the solid on mean? Look down here on the diagram. See if it's on there. I can't remember if it's yes. Uh, one flash. So it doesn't say anything about solid on. It just says one flash, two flash, three flash, four flash, five flash. So I have to assume that solid on is going to be normal operations. He said it wasn't blowing any air. So. Some jumpers on this thing and see what we can get it to do. See what it see what it does. First thing I want to do is probably cycle the blower. See if anything happens with that first. Capacitor doesn't look like it's swollen. Up there, there's our compressor capacitor, but this is going to be a gas pack. And that capacitor doesn't look bubbled or swollen. It's a five. Let's uh, get my meter, we'll check the amp draw. Let's see if we get something on that motor. And it tries to start. Let's see if there's a problem with that. Rollout switch is not tripped. And which one of these is going to get my fan speed up here? I don't know if it's got an X13 motor in it or not. Obviously, it doesn't if it has a capacitor. So, where are these are my motors. I think coming back from my wire, these two are going to be my limit switch right there. Get you a little bit better angle. The red and green are your limit that mounts inside the motor, and there's your common coming off the motor, there's your capacitor wire coming off the motor. So one of these wires I'm gonna have to think it's gonna give me an amp draw when it tries to start. Draw. It is running. So let's uh, fire it off and see what happens. The other jumper's out for that.
cap on the G because that was our G energizing for our cooling speed. So let's see if this motor comes on in our heating speed. I'm not sure. I've got one unused. It may use the same speed. There's nothing up there plugged separately for heating and cooling. It's just this one wire here. So it may run the same speed. Same relay it does and should be a different relay though, I would think. We'll see. We'll get it turned on. Let's see if it fires off. It may not be firing off, I don't know. Now we got a flash. One, two. One, two. So what was the two flash? Two flash is pressure switch or inducer problem. Well, the inducer's not coming on. Oil kind of on it. Huh. So we go back to a solid light. I'm going to unplug that. I don't really hear a click on the board for the inducer motor. It goes straight to a pressure switch problem. So maybe it's the pressure switch because it goes straight to that fault. It doesn't really try to start. See, it goes solid. As soon as I energize W, flash. So we may have an issue with the pressure switch being stuck or something on it. Read that one more time. Pressure switch or inducer problem detected. The draft motor doesn't try to start. I don't get a hum or anything out of it. Yeah, it looks a little cruddy, but I mean the draft motor still isn't coming on. So unless there's water in this switch or something, I don't know. Let me uh, let me check across it real quick. Let's see if it's closed, stuck closed or something, maybe. I don't know. Alright. Uh, let's see what... Let's see what it does. Tacked on the back of those plugs, so we just get right here to it. Should ring through. Ooh. That motor should start first, though, before it tells me I've got a bad pressure switch. All right. Run something in that little thing there. And the motor should try to start first. 
before it gives me any kind of a pressure switch fault, right? Hose it and plugged up. Let's try it again, see what happens. I have to assume it's got to be a board problem. I'm not even trying to start the motor. There we go. It is now. One, two. Now I'm getting that two ball. Let's put this back up. See if the switch is closed. Which is closed now. I mean, that should have happened as soon as I energized the W. Unless it was just I had reset the power, or maybe it was locked in, but it wasn't showing a fault until I energized W and went straight into a pressure switch fault. The draft motor wasn't running. So unless that thing's bleeding through and showing some kind of a pressure switch closed on the start. I know a lot of units will do that if the pressure switch is closed on the start. So if it's got any moisture or anything in it, I don't know. So let's plug it up and see if it fires off. Back to our solid light. These rings, man, the way they rust, that's just a shitty design. The way it leaks that water out like that it just ruins everything under the bottom of it. inside that pressure switch. Maybe it was bleeding over and it was maybe like some of them will do that if your pressure switch sticks closed when you try to when it engages for a call for heat if it, if it runs that circuit and the thing's already closed it'll go into a fault for your pressure switch. Some manufacturers will break that fault down on their fault list and tell you pressure switch closed on start or pressure switch open on start. But, uh, anyway, I'm going to cycle this thing a few times, see what it does, and uh, probably going to recommend replacing this pressure switch. So, anyway, guys, that's a common problem in heating with gas furnaces, pressure switches, you get a little bit of moisture in them, especially a package unit. You sit outside, the humidity comes back inside this thing through the exhaust on it, and goes right back inside this motor housing and right up inside the hose and you'll get you'll get some moisture you know especially when it's been raining four days in a row and it's cold but uh anyway guys that was an easy simple one i'm gonna cycle this thing for a few more times make sure it works and i'm gonna call and see if we can get a pressure switch uh, give them an estimate on that but uh anyway small repair easy fix all right, guys, appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, see you on the next go-round.